Hebrew. My parents, both of them thankfully healthy and alive, both grew up in New York in the 1930s in Hebrew-speaking homes. One of them in Brooklyn and one of them in Far Rockaway. That shaped everything about them. You grow up in New York in the 1930s in a Hebrew-speaking home, and there is no way but you are communicating to your children, your parents, your neighbors, that you are something different from what's going on in the rest of New York. Languages are not instrumental. You do not learn a new language in order to be able to order a, you know, a grande coffee at Starbucks. <laughs> Even though grande isn't really a thing, and why does tall mean small, I don't have any idea. <laughs> but you don't learn French for that purpose, or Russian for the purpose. You point and grunt, and you'll get your burger, or your coffee, or your shirt at United Colors of Benefit, whatever it is you want. You learn a language because a language is a world. Bialik said beautifully that to read Jewish texts, but it was true of any text, really, but he said about Jewish texts, to read Jewish texts in any language other than Hebrew, is like kissing the bride through the veil. Is it a kiss? Yes. Is it the stuff of which dreams are made? No. Think about the following. We say in English, I fell in love with her. Right? You know, some enchanted evening, you may see a stranger across a crowded room, and then before you know it, head over heels, you've totally lost control. I'm not making fun of it, by the way. That's actually exactly what happened when I met my wife. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm literally, I, I, met, I met her for five minutes, and I know I was going to marry her. It took a number of years till she understood the truth of that proposition. But, um, and I'm not sure that she's always relished the choice that she made, but um, hence her absence at this moment. But nonetheless, no, I'm not, so I'm not making fun of that. I, it's literally what happened to me. I took one look at this back then girl, and that was it. I mean, I was just smitten 30-something years ago, and... I still am, actually. But in any event, we have this notion that to fall in love is just to completely lose control. Okay, fine. How do we say that in Hebrew? We say, hit alav tiba. Which, if you know anything about grammar, you know that it's hit panel. It's a reflexive verb. So it literally means, I came to love myself through her. That's a very different conception of love. Languages speak volumes by how they say what they say and what they can't say. Hebrew has no word for accountability. We've never needed it. It has really no word for subtlety. Can't imagine why we'd have one. Right? And English has no word for dafka. Because Protestants aren't that nasty. Languages are whole worlds. And the early Zionists understood that the only thing that all the various immigrants to Israel or Palestine back then had in common, from Morocco and America, the three from America, and France and England and Russia and you know Yemen, the only thing that they all had in common was none of them spoke Hebrew. None of them spoke Hebrew. Arabic was the indigenous language. English was the international language. Russian was the language that the vast majority of them spoke. Yiddish was the language that many of them spoke. The one thing that none of them spoke was Hebrew. So that's the language we'll make of the Jewish thing. Why did we do such a silly thing? Why did Eliezer Ben Yehuda get together and start to work on building this new language? Because Hebrew was the language of the Jews the last time they'd been sovereign. Hebrew was the language of the Jews the last time they lived in their land and ruled themselves. Hebrew was the language of the Jews in the period of the book of Joshua, and the book of Judges, and the book of Samuel, and the books of Kings. The language connoted authenticity. The language connoted sovereignty. The language connoted we determine our own fate. And that's what Zionism was all about. So that was going to be the language. And it works. Not only do the Jews speak Hebrew, lots of non-Jewish people speak Hebrew. There was very little that was funny about the Intifada. It was not one of the funnier periods of Jewish history. But there was one funny moment after a bus bombing at the southern Tel Aviv bus station. Bomb goes off, people die, all the news is blaring. Okay, that's terrible. 
Then they, you know, the reporters run to the scene of the explosion and they put microphones in people's faces. And they found this one woman who was a recent immigrant from North America. And she says, I quote almost verbatim, Ani me'od pachadati, ani lo yadati le'on la'rutz, ra, ra me'od. Okay, fine, right? Then they're looking around for something else, and they find this black guy who's from, like, Nigeria, who's been a foreign worker in Hebrew, uh, in Israel, for a long time, and they put a microphone in his face, and he says, Tishma, matzav musubach, so you know that, you know, whatever. I thought to myself, okay, you know, Herzl, I don't know what you're thinking about this, wherever you are, but Hebrew became a language, not just of the Jews, Hebrew became a real language, and it made the Jews a real people. Languages are the marks of peoples. You can't have Dostoevsky without Russian. And if you read him in English, which most of us have read him, have read him in English, you know you're not reading the real thing. Because there are nuances in Russian that no translation can pick up. And if you read Agnon in English, you're not reading the real thing. And if you read Sartre or Camus, in something other than French, there's a little je ne sais quoi that's lost. Jews understood in the 1930s and the 1940s that what Zionism was about was about rebuilding peoplehood. So they invested in the language. And the one thing that no American Jews are learning today, with almost no exceptions, is Hebrew. The one thing that you were guaranteed not to learn in Hebrew school is Hebrew. American Jewish kids don't know Hebrew. When my parents went to Camp Ramah, the camp was conducted in Hebrew. Now at Camp Ramah, the announcements are made in Hebrew, unless they're really important, like about health or safety, in which case they're made in English. Because everybody knows at a certain level, nobody really gets the Hebrew anymore. Now, part of it's America, by the way. Americans have this unbelievable, myopic worldview, which is that English is sufficient for everything. Right, by the way, if you speak French, in the South Carolina primary. <laughs> Seriously, that's a mark of being un-American. It's an unbelievable thing. And if you speak Chinese in the Republican debate, people make fun of you. But we have this notion that real Americans only speak one language. It's a completely ridiculous notion. But that's part of the myopic worldview that's taken over here to a certain extent. But American Jews at one point invested deeply in Hebrew. And we don't anymore. And it's because Hebrew is not a way to communicate. Hebrew's way of being part of a people. There's no Protestant language. What language do Protestants speak? Depends where they live. What language do Muslims speak? Don't tell me Arabic. Muslims in Dearborn, Michigan do not speak Arabic. They speak English. And a generation, a younger generation of Muslims in France do not speak English or Arabic. They speak French. There's no Muslim language. There's no Protestant language. Yes, Latin was often associated with the Catholic Church, but Catholics didn't speak Latin. They just did their rituals in Latin. There is a Jewish language. There were two. Right? There was one, and it was destroyed. It was Yiddish. But Hitler succeeded in a large measure. The gloating that we have, only, only, only got a third of us, is completely ridiculous. There were 4 million Jews in Poland before the war. There were 300,000 left at the end of the war, and there's 10,000 today. He won. Absolutely won. And Yiddish is gone because of that. But there's a new language that came to life. And American Jews once invested in it because it was the mark of Jewish people. Then. And the fact that American Jews are not investing in Hebrew anymore is an indication not that we don't have the capacity intellectually to learn a second language, we don't want it.